much do you hate dumping your black tank? This is what we did to solve our problem. Okay, this is just a simple unboxing of the OGO. This here is a picture with it outside the box, taking the tape off of the outside pieces. This is put all the stuff that's inside. It's lots of cardboard and all the parts are located in the pail inside. You're gonna have the vent hose, you're gonna have the 12 volt uh, wire, you're gonna have the spray bottle, which you're supposed to put a mixture of water and vinegar in to help clean the toilet after each use. So it has the owner's manual in there also about how to uh, put the composting material in there. This is the inside, kind of see the pail. This is the toilet that we're taking out of the host Yukon. It's a fairly easy way to take it out. You're gonna, first thing you do is take out the, the line, the water line going in. Very easy, you just twist off. Here, I'll show you the caps for the bolts and the nuts that go to hold the toilet down. Just, you can just pull those off. Underneath that is a 13 millimeter nut that you will use a 13 millimeter wrench to pull off. Once you get the, all the hardware off, you just lift the toilet straight up. When you take the water line off, make sure you have a rag there because the water will come out. And I also, you know, turn, turn your water off and I did a, a, a drain on the low lines so the water would, would not be pressurized. So this is the end of the hose with it taken off. Just make sure you have a rag because water will come out. And this is showing the, the toilet removed with the flange. And on here is where I screwed up. I was trying to take the flange off so I could make it flush. Don't attempt to do this because that flange is glued to the uh, black water tank. So don't waste your time trying to do it. You would have to literally cut it off to get it to, to come out. And I didn't want to destroy anything in case we ever wanted to do something different. Here's a picture of the plug that we used. Um, it's a three inch plug that we got at, at Lowe's. And you just take that plug and you put it into the flange, righty tighty, lefty loosey, and it tightens up. I used three quarter inch plywood in order to achieve a high enough base for the composting toilet to sit on. You, what you're trying to do is achieve, the plug is higher than the flange. So that's why you use a three quarter inch piece of plywood. Here I set the composting toilet on the plywood to trace out the, the bottom of the composting toilet so I know where to cut. I used a, a Sharpie to, to achieve this. And here I am tracing it out. Once I get it traced out, I take it off in preparation of cutting it. So using the jigsaw to cut it out. Once I get it cut out, you start sanding it. So I'm just using my hand sander to sand off the edges, round off the corners so no splinters, kind of make it look nice. And then I ended up doing sanding both sides just to make it look nicer. Here I have the plywood laid down so I can push down on the flange that has the bolt and the bolt is going to mark where we need to do our radius for the cutout. There is highlighted the indentation of the bolt from the plug to the flange. That's what I use to do my measurement. And this is just a cheater way. I measured four inches from the uh, mark of the bolt and then just used a piece of string with a highlighter to make my circle. Here I'm using my drill and a bit to start the pilot hole for the jigsaw. Using the jigsaw to cut out the circle. I have the circle cut out. More sanding, getting all the rough edges and the splinters off. Doesn't have to be perfect because nobody's really gonna ever see it, but I kind of made it perfect. And this is with it sitting in, so it can make sure that what we did was correct. Now, <clears throat> we have it centered off because on the, if you're looking at it, on the left side is where the button for the mechanism. So you wanna have enough room to put your hand in there to operate it. And we're painting it black with just some black spray paint I had on my shelf. And I'm glad we did go with the black color. And all I did was the edges. And that's the paint that we used I'm using a blow dryer to speed up the drying process. So that's Miss Donna. 
drying it off. Here is a plug for the water line that we got at Lowe's. This is the part number that we got. So just, you can use this to go into Lowe's and you should be able to find a part. It was a little difficult finding what we needed, but we got it. Here I am cutting off the very top of the bolt because it's really too far up and I'm using my grinder to do that with, just so I can have a little bit more clearance with the three inch or three quarter inch plywood. Now remember that when you're doing this, they use safety glasses and this is gonna get extremely hot. Uh, so when you cut it off, you might have a pair of pliers handy and be able to take off the broken piece right away so it doesn't melt the plastic plug. Now we're going to be installing the vent line. I chose a two and one eighth inch hole saw because I wanted the hole to be a little bit bigger than the vent pipe because where the vent pipe goes through, I'm also going to be putting in the power line. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't tight so I had a little bit more playroom. And it worked out perfectly because I didn't want anything to pinch the power line. This is underneath the couch in the Yukon. And we're going to be going in right where the water line goes in. We're, we're gonna be trying to cut the hole there. And this is the opposite side. I tried to stay as low as possible to the floor while I was doing this. One thing that you'll have to consider is you will have to cut off part of the frame of the couch. It's just a little piece of, of aluminum because of the size of the hole saw. I didn't feel like it was that big of a deal. This is the hole and I sanded the hole to get the splinters off of it. And this is the power cord that has to go in with the vent line. So this is the hose and the vent line. That's why I went a little larger with the hole. You can see the power line coming through the hole. That's a piece of the metal that I had to cut off, like I was saying on the aluminum frames, just a, just a little bit. We got some PVC pipe to put at the end of the vent line in order to go to the cover. Another picture of the vent. You just take the two screws out of the middle and that will let you take off the lid, basically. And that's what it looks like from the side angle. So I'm going to go into where the uh, black tank drain is. Instead of putting a hole through the RV, I'm going to go through where the battery box is if, uh, for the drain. And you'll see where the arrow, that's my intended plan. So that's the inside, again, underneath the couch. And this is why we went underneath the couch with, couch with the vent line trying to keep everything just a little bit simple. Again, I, I stepped down to the next size lower of uh, the hole saw to make this one a little bit tighter. And that's the after effect of the placing the hole. That's the vent cover for the outside. That's the PVC that's going from the vent cover to the inside. And you place the hose to the vent. We did put some Vaseline around the, the, the black part to get it to go on easier. That's what it looks like installed. It's out of the way, you can't see it, no hole inside of the RV. Okay, here we are installing our plywood base. And I basically went two inches from the edge of the counter of the sink. These are the screws I used to uh, screw down the wood base. These are the directions for the venting of the tank. Here is the inside of the tank. If you see where the red arrow is, the vent and the fan can go on either side because of the way the tank is sitting on the base near the wall, we had to put the fan to the left side and the, and the intake to the right side. Super easy to do. Once you uh, get it, you just tie wrap your wires back up out of the way. We're using the uh, screws that it came with, the stainless steel screws to go into the base. One screw I had to use a little bit longer. I had to use a wood screw with a washer in order to go th around the flange to the base. And this is the screw that we used, just another wood screw from the base that we used to screw it down with. And once this sucker's in there, it's not going, it's, it's, it's in there pretty tight. And you can see the plywood black base on the bottom. It came out really nice. Now here we found the wires for the 12 volt underneath the couch. I used the, the, the bath lines because uh, they were constantly uh, 12 volt power there. And here I am lining up the wires with some connectors. This is what I'm using. So I didn't have to splice the wires. I used to bought these connectors that you just put the wire in, push it down, crimp them, and you're done. It was a super easy process to uh, hook up the, 
the 12 volt power. Once I did get everything crimped and the way I liked it, I did just put some electrical tape around there just to kind of help protect the wires. And here's the, the pail installed with the urine container in the very front. And then now when we took the base place off, when I was trying to take the flange off, we went ahead and tried to repair the vinyl. And I used furniture tacks to do that with because ours was peeling up and I didn't want to try to glue it. So I did it this way and it came out really nice. This is the front view. This is the side view. You can tell that it's a little bit higher, so you will need a stool. This is with the lid open. You can see the funnel in the middle for the urine that goes into its separate jug. Here you open up the door to do your number two. This is the Ogo Cocoa Core that you add eight to 16 ounces of water and you use that to fill up your bucket. Thanks for watching mom and dad's video. Please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and smash that bell for notifications for the next video.